the two never be parted. He's an advisory today. Oh, what a surprise. It'd nice if Starlink has put some brackets on there to mount this thing with, but instead, uh, got a trick to show you though. If you tap a hole and you want this bolt to come right to the end so you catch all the threads, put a nut on the bolt and then you can drive it in and tighten that nut down so it takes up the tension. So it's just like a little piece of all thread with a nut. That way I catch all the threads, but I don't have my bolt protruding so I can put the board back on here. So that's all there is to Starlink. You got the Wi-Fi router inside and you got the antenna outside. You're pretty much done. Look at this lake today. We're on break. Watching the Chad eat the minnows. Six on the upload. That's not bad. I've seen worse. And it really does change a lot. I mean, it just goes up and down during the day. And um, it might have to do with my boat drifting around, the antenna being set wrong, but it, it also does adjust itself. I've noticed that if I reset it, it, the antenna takes a little swing around and finds a better satellite orientation, but the boat will soon drift too. Wow. Okay, truth said here, it normally doesn't touch anywhere near that high. So the download is fantastic right now. And the upload is not too bad. I've seen that everywhere between, uh, you know, 0.5 and eight or nine. And I went to their website and they now have a marine version out. It comes uh, with the mount on a pole. Uh, it wouldn't be any easier for me to mount. And I'm not sure what the differences are, but they are updating their stuff all the time. And I have the RV version, which means they expect me to move to new areas and I can tell them where I am at. I haven't even done that. They still think I'm in Tulsa and it's working this great. So I'm not even sure I'll bother. Okay, the marine version, check this out. They must have learned something about putting the word marine in the price because it's $5,000 a month and $10,000 for the hardware. But you do get 350 megabits per second. So it's not for me, it's for the yachts. And I pay $135 a month for the uh, Starlink with the RV edition on it. Uh, I think it's $100 a month if you're not gonna be RV. And then I pay not much less than that for the uh, T-Mobile. Now the T-Mobile had some kind of a setup fee, it wasn't bad, but the Starlink equipment is $700 for the purchase of it. But still, uh, it'll be something that I can take across the world pretty soon, and that's, that's just fantastic. And yeah, I power cycled it, now the antenna's facing a different direction, so there you go, must be up there. And plenty of people have just mounted the antenna directly to the top of their van or whatever, and it seems to work just fine. So maybe this is helping a little bit. Maybe because the boat moves, it's not helping at all. Difference between uh, RVs and boats is RVs don't use anchors. And the alternative is something like this little T-Mobile hotspot. I've got this one and I've got this one too, which I use much more frequently. But that's all dependent upon are you anywhere near a cell tower. But let's go ahead and check it. We'll flip over to uh, the Wi-Fi through T-Mobile. Run our test again. Yeah, not bad at all. Now, if this video is helpful and you like our series, and we hope you'll promote yourself from Bilge Rat, which means going along for a free ride to a supporter, you can shop at Amazon or at Sea Chest Foundations forward slash shop. Well, Sea Chest goes to researchers that'll use this boat in the future. Amazon, money goes to probably diesel, okay? And there's one other thing you ought to know about this Starlink thing. I have an old Amplify system. This is a Wi-Fi mesh, and it needs to jack in. The Starlink does not come with an ethernet port, but you can buy an ethernet adapter for it, and that simply jacks into the cable that's coming down from the antenna to the Wi-Fi router. And so then you can pull your Cat5 off of that and have ethernet. And that's necessary for me, especially because this is a steel boat with an aluminum pilot house, and Wi-Fi doesn't travel very far through this thing. The Starlink app comes with a little program that you can use to see how good you're gonna get coverage throughout your boat or house. Allow me to demonstrate. This has to be done after you've set up your uh, Wi-Fi router and mine's right behind that panel there. So you can see I'm in the green. Let's go out on the forward part of the deck and you can see we're already in the deep red. So it's not even getting out of the pilot house. And if I went down below, there, I might as well be in outer Mongolia. Once I get my mesh network set up, That'll take care of it. Now the thing with Starlink is they're going to go through a lot more changes and one of the things right now is they have the ability to uh, go from me to a satellite back to an earth station. 
but that doesn't get you way out into the ocean. Uh, later on, they're going to be able to go from me up to a satellite, to another satellite, to another satellite, and then back down, so it'll cover the entire planet. I mean, it is a fantastic thing. You pay $130, $135 a month for it, but man, compared to what you'd have to have paid just five years back to get anything close to it, it's phenomenal. So, fantastic service.